Hey there, John from MySolarHome.us. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the different battery options. If you're thinking about going solar or you're thinking about going solar with battery backup, this would be a good video to watch. I'm going to be talking about the solar edge battery, the Enphase battery, the Tesla battery, Tesla in fact has two batteries and the Generac battery. So I'm going to be comparing all four of these. It may be surprising to many of you that solar panels they actually shut off when your grid goes down. So if you have a power outage, if you have solar, you're not going to have power in your home. And unfortunately, that's something which is not intuitive and most folks don't know that. The reason you don't have any power is not that the solar panels can't make any power uh, during an outage. It's that if they make power during an outage, that power could backfeed into the grid and then the local utility person who's working on a pole could get electrocuted. So that's why by law, solar panels also shut off when there is no grid. So the only way today you can use your solar panels power during an outage is if you have, if you add batteries to your solar panel. Until now, there was really no option to this. If you bought solar panels, you would not have power during an outage. But now Enphase has a new product known as the IQ8 microinverter, which has something known as sunshine backup where you can actually use the power from your panels during a power outage without buying a battery. Now, when you're thinking of doing batteries with solar panels, you should be aware that batteries are humongously expensive. A solar system could be from you know 15,000 to 50, 60,000 to cover your usage in your home. And if you're looking at doing battery backup, and when I'm saying battery backup, I'm thinking of essentials for your battery backup. Lights, your internet, TV, uh, your computers, your fridge, your freezer, your sump pump, and maybe a small well pump. The minimum battery size you're looking at is a 10 kWh battery. And that is, regardless of the brand that you think about, it's gonna cost you about 15,000 if not more. So batteries are expensive. Now, if that's sticker shock to some of you, there is a cheaper alternative, which is the Enphase IQS Sunshine Backup. But even the Sunshine Backup adds about five to $6,000 to your cost. For this comparison video, I've chosen the 10 kWh base units for all these models. Let's start with the energy capacity of these batteries. The Tesla's score, they're, they're a little higher in capacity at 13.5 kWh, followed by the Enphase at 10 kWh. The solar edge is at 9.7 and the Generac is at 9 kWh. All these units installed are in the ballpark of about 15,000 bucks. A 10 kWh unit is good for essential loads in your home. Things like your lights, your outlets. You can do anything in the 120 volt range you'll be able to do with a 10 kWh battery at your home. So let's look at the size of these batteries. Now, as you can see, they come in different shapes and forms. Marie is about five feet, six inches tall. That's 66 inches tall. And that's a little shorter than the Generac battery, which is about 68 inches tall. The Tesla, both the Teslas, they're, they're exactly the same size, about 45 inches tall. Uh, 30 inches wide. The, the solar edge battery is about 46 inches tall and 32 inches wide. The end phase battery, it's just 26 inches tall, but it's 42 inches wide. Now, all these units, when you install batteries in your home, they need controller units. They could need sub panels. In the case of the Generax and the solar edge, you'd need additional inverters. So there is a lot more equipment which comes along with the battery. You should be looking at 10 to 8 feet of free space in your garage or in your basement. Now, more, almost all these batteries are, you know, rated to be kept outdoors, but it's it's almost 100% advisable to keep them indoors or keep them in a very shaded location outdoors. These batteries, they come in different weights. I haven't gotten to the weights because it really doesn't matter. You're not gonna be lifting these guys up, but once they get installed, they're gonna stay in one place. So the next thing we should look at is what is the battery technology used by all of them? Now, this is very important because Enphase is the only battery which uses lithium ferrous phosphate technology. All the other guys use lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt. That's the NMC technology. Now, NMC technology has got an advantage that the batteries are slightly smaller in size compared to a, a ferrous phosphate battery, and they're able to shoot out a little more power. The lithium ferrous phosphate technology is far safer. It doesn't catch fire. Many of you will have them in your garage. If by chance somebody in your household rams your car into the battery, all these NMC batteries are likely to catch 
fire and cause a horrendous disaster. But the lithium ferrous phosphate batteries, they do not have that. So depending on where you're planning to install, you should look at this. Um, you, you should consider the technology of your battery. Now let's look at expansion. Now expansion is important because like I said, these batteries are expensive. It's 15,000 bucks each. Now once you buy the battery, let's say you decide that you need a little more power than you, you have right now. It's it's much better if you're able to expand in small units. For example, the, the N phase gives you expansions in about 3.3 kWh. So you can go from about 10 kWh to 13 to 16, and you can go right up to 40 kWh. Both the Tesla batteries, whether you do Powerwall 2 or Powerwall Plus, you only can expand it by, by doubling. You can you have to add another battery. The Solar Edge, again, uh, you have to add another battery. 9.7 is expandability. Now, one of the very important factors of, of buying a battery, what appliances can you run in your home? The Generac and Powerwall Plus, the Solar Edge have got a very generous 9kW and 7.6kW power that these guys can shoot out in the daytime. You will be able to run, you know, 240 watt volt appliances like your air conditioner for a short duration. Tesla Powerwall 2 and the N phase have slightly less power at 5.8kW, 3.84kW for the N phase. The big difference here is during the daytime, both the N phase and the Powerwall can use power from your panels, 3.8kW for the for the N phase, but with all the power from your PV. Now, normally, if your panels are running, if you have a 10kW system, it might be shooting out 8kW. So with 8 and 3.84kW, you actually have about 12 kW available for you with the N-Phase battery when the panels are up and running. It's the same with the Tesla. The only caveat is under certain circumstances when the battery goes below a certain level of charge, you won't have access to the, the PV. That's why I put there as, as limited PV. So overall, even if power during daytime, when you have power, when you are on grid, the, the Tesla and the N-Phase 10 kWh are the better option in my opinion. Now, when you when you're out of power, when there is no grid. So that's daytime power off grid. It's the same for the end phase. It's the same. You get 3.84 kW plus you have access to all your PV. Same with Tesla, 5.8 kW plus the PV. Like I said, some cases, if the battery charge goes down, you won't have access to, you'll just have 5.8 kW available in those cases. For the Powerwall Plus, you have maximum of 9.6 kW, which is nice, which is a little more than what you have during an off grid, during an on grid situation. But for the Generac and the Solar Edge, you are stuck. In fact, with the Solar Edge, your power in an off grid even, even goes down to 5 kW. The Generac, you still have 9 kW. In terms of peak or surge, this is the power that is required to, to start, you know, large motors, st start your AC, if you have a big well pump you need a lot of power. So anything over seven or eight kW is, is, is great. Now here the end phase looks a little weak at 5.8 kW, but the end phase has got something known as a power control system. Now what that does is it's able, because of its electronics, it's able to reduce the voltage from the battery and give a surge of up to about 7.5 kW. All the other batteries are at the seven kW or more range. So Peak surge is not a problem for, for any of these batteries. You'll be able to run most 240 volt loads. Of course, with none of these batteries, do you want to run two of them at the same time? This is just to get one started. Next, we're going to look at PV shedding. In many markets, there are restrictions on the amount of power or current that you can shoot back into the grid through your main panel. And the moment it goes over a limit, you have to look at upgrading your panel. And in case of California, you even have to look at a new meter known as an NGOM meter. In those circumstances, it really makes sense if you're able to somehow isolate a part of your solar panel system and keep it away from feeding power into the grid. This is known as PV shedding. Now, the only company which offers this feature is uh, Enphase. And I put this in this comparison because there are so many people buying solar and batteries in California. Next, we have load shedding. This is really important also. And the two companies which are the best at these are the Enphase and the Generac. Both of them have got the ability to switch on and off loads from an app. Last, these are some other considerations that you should look at when you're looking at batteries. Enphase has got an additional five-year warranty. Everybody, all these batteries have 10-year warranties. The N-Phase currently is the only one which offers you the option of buying another five years of 
warranty by Solaris has got a wonderful EV charger option so if you're planning to get an EV in the future and you're looking at storage this could be the, the feature which which gets you over the line because everything is integrated now in terms of generator access Enphase gives you the ability to attach any generator onto the battery and in even better you can use your generator your panels and your battery all at the same time none of the other batteries can can you do that with you can connect generac uh, generators to your generac battery which is great but i don't think they allow you to to, to, to connect to other generators solar edge has got generator connectivity as well and powerwall has recently added generator connectivity so overall if i were to buy a battery i would definitely go with the enphase battery but then i'm a little bit of an enphase geek also i i really admire their r d and the engineering and the excellent integration of the entire system however everybody is now moving into an integrated solution so if you like tesla you would love the tesla powerwall and stick to their world get the panels batteries everything from tesla the same thing if you're doing it from solar edge and you want an ev charger do the whole hog with solar edge or do the whole hog with generac everybody's moving into their silos and giving you a complete solution it's very difficult to say that one is better than the other you've got to look at the package and decide which one makes more sense for you i hope you enjoyed this video do like and subscribe thank you for watching have a great day